So one of my Instagram videos made 500k views, which is insane. This number does not exist. It's definitely too big. And so I thought, why not go in depth into the style and lives of new wave French actresses, since there are so many of them that are less known, like Anouk Aimé, Catherine Deneuve, Jeanne Moreau, compared to the big names like Brigitte Bardot or Anna Karina. I'm gonna give you a few movies you can watch with them, some styling tips to get inspired by their outfits, and just generally some 60s French gossip. I think it's so much fun. Anna Karina is one of the most famous actresses internationally, I think. She was originally from Denmark and her birth name was Anne Karin Blark Bayer. She met Coco Chanel and she actually told her to change her name to Anna Karina so that it was more memorable and that it sounds better. Coco Chanel liked this name because it reminded her of Anna Karenina, you know, the lady with the trains from the Tolstoy book. She was one of the earliest collaborators of Jean-Luc Godard and they were even married for four years. They collaborated on movies like Pierrot le Fou, Vivre sa vie. She was referenced to as the effervescent free spirit of the French New Wave, with all of the scars that the position entails. She was born into a broken family. Her father abandoned her and she lived in foster care for four years. After that, she went to live with her mother and her stepfather. Her mother was telling her that her eyes and forehead were too big and her father was physically violent towards her. So at the age of only 17, with the equipment equivalent of $15 in her pocket, she left home and hitchhiked to Paris. She was dreaming about living in Paris all of her life, she was struggling to find a place to live there at the beginning, and was going to churches to ask priests for a place to stay. Eventually a priest found her a room near Bastille. One day she was walking in the streets of Paris and stopped at the Café Les Deux Magots. There she was noticed by a photographer called Catherine Arlet and was asked to have a few pictures taken of her. After that she was given contacts in the fashion industry and that's how she started doing shoots for Elle magazine and then even met Pierre Cardin and then later Coco Chanel. She was doing commercials for Coca-Cola and Palmolive. This was the ad actually in which Jean-Luc Godard first saw her and would cast her in his directorial debut called A bout de souffle, Breathless. I think I'm very here. Um, he actually asked her to star in this movie but she refused because there was a nude scene. So technically they both made their first movie um, Le Petit Soldat in the same year, but it was not his directorial debut anymore. Her style is mainly revolving around three colors, red, white, and black. She is the queen of red tights, which is insane that they are making a comeback now. This 60s photo shoot lived rent-free in my head for a long time. She would wear ballerina flats, French bangs, and black eyeliner. This white corset dress from Yung Femme et Yung Femme was pretty iconic, especially with a sailor top, and was this dress dress from Pierre Le Fou. In terms of movies, you can watch to get inspired My Life to Live, A Woman is a Woman, Pierrot le Fou, Alphaville, Band of Outsiders, The Nun, and Cleo from 5 to 7. Anne Vaziemski made her debut at the age of 18 in the movie Ozar Bastazar, for which she got international recognition. She was born in Berlin and her father was a literal Russian prince who escaped during the revolution. And her maternal grandfather was a Nobel Prize winner in literature. So the girl is coming literally from aristocracy. She was traveling a lot for her father's job. Since he was a French diplomat, she got her first role in the movie Ozar Bastazar, where she meets Jean-Luc Godard, falls in love with him and shortly marries, after which she stars in several of his films. This would be merely one year after he divorced Anna Karina, so I guess he found himself another muse. She was wearing printed mini dresses, white leg slacks and ballet flats, the modern 60s French girl style, fur coats and paperboy hats can be seen worn by her in the movies, and she was also a very successful writer later on in her life. You can see her in the movies La Chinoise, Theorem, Weekend and The Secret Sun. Anukami is known for her roles in La Dolce Vita, A Man and a Woman, and Lola. She was known for her striking features and beauty, and she often portrayed a femme fatale with a melancholy aura. In the 1960s, Life magazine commented that after each picture, her enigmatic beauty lingered in the memories of her audience and called her the left bank's most beautiful resident. She was born in Paris to actor parents. Her father was Jewish and her mother was Catholic. 
Her birth name was Françoise Dreyfus, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and she took the first name Anouk from the first role she ever played on screen. A screenwriter advised her to take her last name Aimé, which means loved in French. She loved boldly combining colors like the different shades of green or incorporating purple in her wardrobe. We can see her wearing espadrille with a midi skirt here and a sweater, men's shirts with jeans and short hairstyles. You can see her in movies like Eight and a Half, La Dolce Vita, Model Shop, Lola, A Man and a Woman for Which You Won a Golden Globe, Head Against a Wall, Montparnasse 19, Les Amants de Véron, and many, many others since she starred in more than 70 movies in her lifetime. Brigitte Bardot, also commonly referred to as Bebe, is an actress, singer, and animal rights activist. We know her for movies like Contempt and God Created Woman. Her first movie was And God Created Woman, that's where she would get recognition and fame. She was even the subject of the essay Lolita Syndrome by Simone de Beauvoir, in which she was criticizing Bardot's infantilization. She also described her as a locomotive for women's history, and declared her the first and most liberated woman of post-war France. She was born and raised in Paris and was training as a ballerina in her early years. Her parents were well off and she lived in a seven-room apartment in the 16th arrondissement in Paris, which is the most expensive. However, her parents were very conservative and strict. Her mother would tell her which classmates she could befriend and which ones she couldn't. When Brigitte and her sister broke a vase, her father told them to address him with vous, which is the formal way of addressing someone and starting treating them as strangers. She started working as a model for a magazine and auditioned for a role in a movie. Her parents were completely against. Her grandfather, though, let her become an actress, saying if she is to become a um, it will not be because of cinema. Very supportive indeed. She met Roger Vadim, who is a French director and screenwriter, and fell in love with him. When her father found out, he told her he is sending her to England for school, and her ticket was bought for the next day. In protest, she put her head in an oven with open fire. After this incident, her parents accepted the relationship with the condition that they marry when she turns 18. She starred in his directorial debut, and God Created Woman, and became an international star. At some point, she was even the most paid actress in France. Her style signature was a headband, the off-the-shoulder top, her long blonde hair with layers, her favorite shoe brand was Repetto, and she actually collaborated with them to create a shoe that would resemble ballerinas as much as possible. And she wore them in the movie and got created woman. In terms of makeup, she would wear a strong smoky eye with a nude lipstick. Her most famous movies are Viva Maria, The Night Haven Fell, Don Juan If Don Juan Was a Woman, Not a Girl, the Bride is Much Too Beautiful, and others. Françoise Dorlac was known for the movies like Les Demoiselles de Rochefort, in which she played alongside her real-life sister, actually Catherine Deneuve, for the roles of two twin sisters in the movie. She was the daughter of screen actors and started modeling for Dior and then got casted for the movie The Wolves in the Shipfold. She had a small role in the movie Tonight or Never alongside Anna Karina. The same year that the young girls of Rochefort came out, she tragically died at the age of 25 in a car accident. She was driving from Saint-Tropez to Nice Airport and was late for her flight, so she was speeding. She was supposed to fly to London for a projection of the movie of the young girls of Rochefort in English. About her style, she would say, I want to dress so that everybody tries to dress like me and nobody can. Her and her little sister Catherine are like two sides of the coin. Françoise is effervescent, spirited and adventurous, while Catherine is cool, reserved and cautious. Their mother remembers Françoise throwing herself at everything with passion while describing Catherine as a tender, fragile little girl who loved candy. Their clothes reflect their personalities. Françoise is into the metallics and prints, so fashionable around the mid-1960s. Catherine goes for a more sophisticated classic look. In a 1966 interview, Catherine declares, claims she always looks like she has nothing in the closet and I look like I have six closets. She wears casual things, but she has 100 casual things. And I have three subtle things. You can see her in movies like The Man From Rio, The Soft Skin, Cool de Sac, Billion Dollar Brain, Where the Spies Are, and others. Catherine Deneuve actually made her debut on screen at the age of 13 for a movie that she had done one year prior when she was only 12. 
You maybe know her from movies like The Umbrellas of Cherbourg and Donkey Skin. She chose her mother's maiden name to differentiate herself from her sister at the advice of her parents. But since then, she had said that she regretted it. She wished she had kept the name Dorlac since she said she did not like the name Deneuve and that it's hard to pronounce. The Guardian wrote, Catherine Deneuve's glassy stare of anxiety dominates the movie. She was the face of Chanel No. 5 in the late 70s. She was the muse of Yves Saint Laurent, who dressed her for the movies Belle du Jour, La Chamade, La Sirene du Mississippi. She is pretty politically involved as well, fighting for the right for abortion, legalizing same-sex marriages, and fighting against the death penalty in the US. However, in 2018, she signs a petition saying that the Me Too movement has gone too far and has become a witch hunt, for which she got a lot of backlash, and deservedly so. Her style was much more conservative compared to her sisters. We definitely associate both of them to the 60s trapeze dresses of the Demoiselle de Rochefort or the beige trench coat she was wearing in the umbrellas of Cherbourg. Her style was so highly influenced by her almost 30-year collaboration with Yves Saint Laurent, who she had met for the first time as a simple client of his boutique. She would be dressed in fur coats, satin gowns, leopard prints, and kitten heels. We see her wearing courage coats and little black dresses and recently she had started being dressed by Louis Vuitton. You can see her in movies like Belle du Jour, The Hunger, Dancer in the Dark and others. Claude Chad was the daughter of university professors and she started her acting career in theater and then later in a television series. While performing on stage of a theater in Paris, she was discovered by François Truffaut and casted in his film Stolen Kisses. He was completely taken by her beauty, her manners, her kindness, and her joie de vivre. They started a relationship and were supposed to marry, but François changed his mind the night before the wedding. By the way, fun fact, the same François Truffaut had a relationship with both Catherine Deneuve and François d'Orléac as well, who he would call raspberry, because in French, framboise, it sounds like Françoise. Everybody was dating each other at that time, apparently. No work professionalism. Claude Jade went on to star in the Alfred Hitchcock's movie Topaz at the age of 19. She was proposed a seven-year contract by Universal Studios, which she turned down because she said she preferred working in French. We can see her wearing paper boy and sailor hats and white sunglasses. She shot movies in Italy, Japan, and the Soviet Union. You can see her in Bad and Bored, Love on the Run, My Uncle Benjamin, and others. Orson Welles called her the greatest actress in the world after shooting with her the movie The Trial. She was born in Paris and her mother was a dancer at the Folie Bergère, which is a cabaret theater. Her father was French and her mother was English. She fell in love with theater after seeing a play of Antigone and after attending the Conservatoire de Paris, she started playing on stage and in movies. She was also a vocalist and even performed with Frank Sinatra at Carnegie Hall. She had a relationship with, you guessed it, François Truffaut, but also with Pierre Cardin for five years good for her. Alongside Catherine Deneuve, she signed the Manifesto 343 that she had illegally gotten an abortion in order to legalize abortions. However, she did sign the petition in support of Roman Polanski, which is disappointing, to say the least. Her style at first glance was the typical 50s fashion, a tailleur for the day and midi dresses cinched with a belt for the evening. She also wears straight dresses and more unstructured suits later on in her life. I'm also very obsessed with this outfit with the belt. I guess her relationship with Pierre Cardin really influenced her style. You can see her in movies like Jules et Jim, Elevator to the Gallows, The Night, The Lovers, Viva Maria, The Bride Wore Black, and others. Jean Seberg is an American actress that is considered a new wave cinema icon for her role in Breathless by Jean-Luc Godard. She was a victim of the FBI's Cointel Pro project in order to discredit her because she was supporting the Black Panthers. Trigger warning, she ended up taking her own life. She was born in Marshalltown, Iowa, and her parents were a substitute teacher and a pharmacist. She went to university to study filmmaking 
and a neighbor had applied for her for the role of Jean of Arc against 18,000 other candidates without her knowledge for a movie. She got the part, but the movie was a critical and commercial failure. She would later on say that she was burned at stake two times, once in the movie and the second time by the critics, and that the second time hurt so much more. She later on filmed Bonjour Tristesse with the same director in Paris that was also a big flop, but at least she got to build connections and ultimately be cast in Breathless that was a success. She hated her role in that movie and would later on say that in Paris she was always playing characters that she did not care about. Her style was memorable from the movie Breathless. She had her short, androgynous haircut, Breton striped shirt, cigarette pants, and flat shoes. Her looks were modern and at the same time intemporal. The white shirt and floral cigarette pants was a look that also stands out. She also loved wearing her knits and trench coats. She returned to Hollywood but would struggle finding good roles, partly because she was blacklisted for her involvement with anti-war groups and supporting Native Americans and the Black Liberation Movement. There was an article that came out when she was pregnant that was saying that the real father of the baby was a Black Panther member. These rumors had caused her so much stress that she went into premature labor and lost her daughter. Her husband would say that after this she would try to take her own life each year at the infant's anniversary. After an abusive relationship with 19-year her junior Ahmed Azni, she was found overdosed in her car. She did leave a legacy of not only movie roles but also political involvement that would change the course of history. You can see her in movies like Bonjour Tristesse, Les Autres Solitudes and others. Delphine Seyric was a Lebanese actress and director. Her father was the director of the Beirut Archaeological Institute. She studied acting at Comédie de Saint-Étienne and then in New York in Actors Studio. She played in movies like Last Year at Marimbad, after which she moved to Paris and starred in the movie Stolen Kisses. She was fluent in French, English and German, so she shot movies in all three languages. She was also a big feminist icon in France. She directed the movie Shut Up and Be Pretty, where Jane Fonda also played, where they spoke about the sexism in the film industry. Under the video collective Insumuse, she and Carol Rosopoulos produced several videos on focusing on representations of women in the media, labor, and reproductive rights. Her style was very memorable in Les Lèvres Rouges, which is the Daughters of Darkness in English, in which she plays the role of a lesbian vampire who seduces young men to keyboard them and then seduce their wives. In this movie she wears feather dresses, silver dresses, and breaks the stereotype of a femme fatale. We see her in a feather dress, also in the movie last year at Marimbad, where her character has more of a ghost attire. For this movie, her looks were made by Chanel, for whom she was also a loyal client. She liked the idea of a more liberated attire for women. Chanel was not a very big fan of the Dior new look. She was seeing it as a step back to the more rigid kind of clothes. Her haircut from last year at Marimbad had also become very popular in Europe and in the US when it came out there, but the truth is Delphine would cut her hair right before the start of the shooting without telling everyone, perhaps in a way to keep control over her appearance. The now iconic hairstyle is famous to these days, and her makeup was inspired by the 1920s makeup. You can see her in movies like Jean Dillman, Stolen Kisses, India Song, Donkey Skin, Daughters of Darkness, and of course, the last year at Marimbad. Let me know if I should talk about more French actresses or fashion icons. And in the meantime, check my Instagram and TikTok for shorter videos. To consider interacting with the buttons below if you like this video. And see you in the next one. Bye!